Hi y'all, my name is Mr. Chow and welcome to Chow Time. I'm back from a couple of week hiatus uh, due to some family and life obligations with this watch here, the Banker from Bolova. This is from the Joseph Bolova collection, kind of a heritage collection. Many thanks to my good friend who let me borrow this watch. His generosity and others like him are allowing me to continue to make these watch reviews and without their generosity, it wouldn't be possible. So big shout out. Thanks a lot. Um, I'll get this watch back to you soon. In order to buy more watches, I need to sell the watches in my collection. So uh, I know I've said this for the last couple of videos, but I'm really going to get on to posting my watches on my Instagram page. The Instagram account is in the description below if you want to take a look at that. One way that you could help support the channel would be to look at my Instagram page and see if there's anything that uh, interests you. Uh, if not, a like and subscribe would also be super helpful. Thanks in advance. The way I review watches is by objectively comparing them against the rubric and that gets me a total score. I then apply a value multiplier to get a value score. I take those two scores, I rank them against all the other watches that I've reviewed. And then after the review, I give a completely subjective opinion based on my personal feelings and how I personally buy and collect watches. Before we get into the review though, I'd like to talk about the purpose of this watch. This is a kind of a dressy um, office watch for um, yeah, kind of office attire. It is deeply influenced by watches from uh, the 40s and 50s, which is kind of earlier than what's in vogue right now, which is uh, a vintage aesthetic from, uh, I would say, the 70s and 80s. Maybe the 70s. So, let's get to it. We'll start with the function, feel, and visual appeal of the case and strap. This stainless steel watch has a uniform polish with no visible flaws, but also feels pretty basic. The Tano shape is a classic one that allows it to stretch across the wrist, but never gets in the way of wrist flex. The crown sits pretty flat against the case, which is normal for this style watch, but hinders the ability to turn it or pull it out. The crown is signed with the word Belova. There are no unpleasant angles or edges on the case or butterfly clasp. The clasp is the other place that the exterior is signed when wearing the watch. The clasp is attached to a thin and supple black leather strap with Joseph Belova signed on the interior. The overall quality of the strap seems adequate neither the highest quality leather and stitching, nor something that will fall apart anytime soon. Back to the front, the crystal is sapphire and has a slight single dome that becomes apparent when viewed from an angle. Opposite the crystal is a half display case back. It shows off the Salida movement. The watch claims to be water resistant, but doesn't bother to tell you how much. I wouldn't allow this to get wetter than getting splashed in the sink or during a rain shower. 7 out of 10 for form, 6.5 out of 10 for function. Let's move on to that vintage inspired dial. I'm no vintage expert, far from it actually, but I believe the watch design borrows heavily from their designs in the 40s and 50s. In particular, I found some models with similar hands, numerals, and case design from that era. The hands are tapered and painted black. They are not flat, but instead slightly curved. The numerals are painted in a khaki color that does create some separation from the goldish silver dial and is legible enough for its intended use. There is no loom at all on this watch which makes sense for this style watch, but would still have been appreciated. The minute track and all other elements are also painted and are well executed. This is all laid out on a sunburst style that 
adds a surprisingly interesting shine to the watch. The date window is presented in stark white, which I do wish was color matched to the numerals, but it's not terribly distracting either. 5 out of 10 for form, 7 out of 10 for function. Let's move on to that Salita movement. This is the SW200, which of course is a clone of the ETA2824. It beats at 28,800 beats per hour, is rated to plus or minus 20 seconds per day, and has a 38 hour power reserve. It hacks and hand winds. I'm not sure which grade movement this is, but it seems quite plain when observed through the case back. It is, however, a robust design that is easy to service. There isn't really much to say about this movement as it's so common, has been around forever, and works well enough that few ever complain. Six and a half for form, five for function, which brings us to a total so far of 37 points out of 60. Let's move on to the most subjective category in the rubric, the brand, heritage, and prestige. Belova was founded in 1875 by Joseph Belova. It was later reincorporated under the name Belova Watch Company in 1923 and was most recently purchased by Citizen in 2008. Belova's claim to fame is probably their Accutron watch technology, which used a tuning fork to regulate a timekeeping element. Accutron was guaranteed to be accurate to one minute per month or two seconds per day, which in the 1960s was leagues better than their mechanical counterparts. More recently, Belova was always on my radar as a beginning watch enthusiast, especially as a cheaper alternative to the spring drive smooth sweep experience. The enthusiasts seem to generally ignore the brand, but hobbyists seem to enjoy them. 4 out of 10 for brand heritage and prestige, bringing the total score to 41 out of 70. The Belova Banker is still in production at the moment and is going for around 995 USD. In the three weeks I've had it, I've only seen it once on the used market and it was marked for 495. I'll use that price because I don't think I'll get another data point for comparison. The calculations bring the value multiplier to 1.629 and the value score is therefore 66.789, slotting in under a trio of Seiko watches. Pretty good company, Belova. So that brings me to my personal opinion on the watch. And I'll just get this out of the way. I am not really into dressy watches. It's not really my style. It doesn't really fit my life. Uh, it doesn't fit my lifestyle. <laughs> and so I would never have bought this watch and I probably still won't. It's, it's just not really my cup of tea. However, the watch is not without its charm. It is really, really light and comfortable. It really does disappear off the wrist when you're wearing it. And when I do look down on it, it is um, something that just kind of makes me smile. And it reminds me of the fact that variety in a watch box is nice. Uh, and I guess the best analogy for me in my life would be when I look at my closet, um, almost everything is like blue or uh, white or maybe a shade of green. Um, and then when I look at my, my pants and shorts, those are also blue or black or gray, um, maybe some khakis here or there. And really I have like nine combinations of of colors that I can possibly wear. And, um, you know, I do have some other shirts that are some other colors. And like when I put on the one orange shirt that I have, my wife always compliments me on it. And, um, you know, it's not something I would, I would go and buy often like yellow or orange shirts, but when I do, I, I love them. <laughs> and, um, 
And when I look at my watch box sometimes and, and the kinds of watches that I like to buy, they are all like kind of similar to each other. And that's what this watch does. It's quirky and fun and it's a little bit different. And even for a vintage inspired watch, it's different because it's, it's, um, you know, it's looking back to a, to a different era of watchmaking than, than kind of what's the popular vintage watch look right now. And like so many other watches that I've borrowed to review on this channel, it's helped me to expand my horizons. And so I really appreciate that. So do you agree with the scoring? Is there anything you would like to change about the rubric? Uh, is there anything that you'd like to see me review? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for making it to the end. I hope you enjoyed. Bye y'all.